So today we're going to show you how to install a front door, an exterior door, and specifically a larger door with a side light. And we're also going to show you how to save $400 doing this. So keep watching and we'll show you the tips of how to install this and save money. So most likely you're replacing the front door because it's ugly and it needs to be changed. It might, the weather stripping night might not be working or it's just a, a builder grade door that you want to put something fancier in. So the first step is to always evaluate the size of the door. Typically door sizes go within two inches from 28 inches all the way up to 36 inches. Typically a front door, you're always going to want a 36 inch door so you can get appliances in, you move your furniture in. You want to be able to get the largest opening to come into your house to bring everything in. So this particular door is a 36 inch door. Now the side lights, they typically come in two inch increments as well. And you can always get something completely custom, but that always costs more money to do that. The standard sizes are 12 inches and 14 inches for side lights. And this particular one is a 14 inch side light. Basically measure the door and the side light, so 14 inches, and you add three inches to that overall opening. So three inches, 36, 14 is 50 inches, so plus three is 53 inches. So to double check out, we'll just kind of go from our trim to trim. So basically, yeah, a, a 53 inch rough in opening is what the door is. So when you look online, you're going to be looking at the side light and the door size and then it'll give you an overall measurement of your rough end size so 53 inches and typically you're at 82 inches for the the height the, the door is actually 80 inches and then you have your, your jam above makes it like basically 81 inches first step is always to measure it see what you want to put into that opening and then price always comes into factor when you're establishing what you're going to purchase first step is to remove this front door i always tell people you really want to make this efficient you don't want to create more work than is necessary that's one thing about demo demo is an easy process but you have to do certain things in a certain order and prevent yourself from creating more work than you actually want to do. The first step is to remove the trim. Always to use a utility knife. Typically the painter always caulks the edge of your trim. So you want to cut that caulking joint so that you don't peel off your drywall. If you just try to pull this off right now, most likely I'd be able to peel off all this paint and I don't want to have to address any of that. Use your utility knife to score the edges. It doesn't take a lot of pressure, just enough just to cut that joint. And we'll do it also on the top. And then the way we're going to be installing this door, we're going to show you how to save a lot of time and headache from the outside, basically not having to really recreate and finish the outside, but we'll get to that later. But I just want to mention that basically work on your inside of the door, taking it out first, and then we'll preserve the outside and keep that from getting damaged. This jam doesn't really matter to me because it's obviously we're replacing the door. So I would always try to go from the front end of the door. You can obviously use a pry bar as well, but avoid using your hammer on the drywall side. If you start to wedge this, you're going to indent your drywall and then you'll have to repair that as well. So try to do all your, your prying on the, on the door side of the trim here. We're going to be putting some new trim on here and I would advise using new trim. Trying to peel this off, it's just going to be dip, very difficult to keep this nice and, and, and reusable. Okay, so we'll take out the door. We'll just, I just have a little nail punch here. It helps take out these hinges. So the next step, we're going to try to get this side light out. And the way we're going to do this is going to be a little unconventional, but I'll show you why this, is, this has to do with saving that $400. My preference to do that is just using a circular saw and cutting through my jam and then a, a sawzall to finish it off. But really, you can pretty much, just as long as you stay away from your metal plates, if you just go right through the center here, you'll be able to cut this in half and then pull this apart. And we'll just use our Sawzall. This is a Diablo nine inch demo blade. So I usually like to use a nine inch because they, that's usually most of the width I ever need to cut. Anything longer can easily bend and anything shorter is kind of tough to do. I could already see that the builder decided not to waterproof underneath this sill. That's usually a problematic area. So we'll show you how to do that properly a little bit later on, but you definitely don't want to have just like exposed wood below your sill. So we'll take out the quarter round. It's basically encasing this side light. So 
you have the screw holding the door in. We're just replacing the door. We don't want to paint the outside of our house. It's usually a common problem. I mean, when you put in a new door, if you if you mess up your siding, this is a uh, basically a composite type material that's painted, probably painted 15 years ago. I don't want to paint the whole outside of the house. So I'm going to try to basically keep my existing brick mold all the way around the opening so that I don't have to mess with the outside. This will really make it a lot quicker for me and, and create a lot, of, you know, a lot less headache over time. So what I'm going to be doing is leaving these jams in place as they sit, but I'm going to take out the top header portion of this. So I'm gonna use an oscillating tool to cut the nails between this because I don't wanna damage this top brick mold that I have on there. So now that you know there's no nails in there, then I can pry this down and pull out the header. And I have screws here that were holding in my old side light. I'm gonna remove those. So we'll remove the old hinges. And at this point, you might be wondering, why am I taking out these hinges? Why am I leaving this old jam? Uh, we'll show you that a little bit further down the road, but this is, this is a way to save a little bit of money on a door like this, you know, by leaving this existing jam in here. So once you get your door out, a pretty important step that I think a lot of people miss is actually sealing the base be below the door. This is always gonna be the biggest, in some ways, the biggest problematic area. If water runs down the door, goes around the sill and gets in here, a lot of times you see this all rotten. This actually doesn't look too bad. Main reason is, is because we're, we're, we have a front porch that is covering this, this front door, so it's minimal amount of water coming to it. You don't wanna have exposed wood underneath your sill. Most scenarios, it, you, you wouldn't necessarily have this concrete stoop coming up. You would just, the door would be basically a step into the door or flush with whatever your patio is. They do make things called a jam sill. It's basically a rubber sill that you put underneath the door. But since we have this concrete stoop, we're not gonna be able to use one of them because they, they are primarily made to wrap around the edge of the base. So we're gonna use this, is called building tape by Protecto Wrap. You use this around doors or anything that you wanna seal, but this is gonna make sure that we protect this wood below the sill. So make sure everything's all clean, dust free before you go installing it. And we're just gonna basically cover this whole area with this wrap. Super sticky stuff. So I'm gonna overlap onto my concrete here. Do like some side flashing here against my jam, my existing jam. And I just wanna make sure that, you know, nothing gets in between these joints in the corner. Here's our new front door. To reduce some weight of moving this thing around, we're actually gonna take the door off its hinges as well. These things have these little locking mechanisms on the bottom of the hinges. So these go in here. So you just have to pop these out so then you're able to get that hinge pin, hinge pin out of there. So this is a scenario where you're gonna save $400. So we're gonna take off our brick mold. But the reason this saved $400 is because these side lights primarily come in stock at 12 inches and the door that we just are trying to replace had a 14 inch side light. If I wanted to custom order this with a 14 inch side light, it would have been $400 more to put this door in. And to me, having a smaller, I mean, you're literally only talking two inches, smaller opening. It's not gonna make any difference as far as me getting into the house. It's the same size, it's a 36 inch door. It's just the side light. So we're gonna just use a, some additional trim work for the outside of the door and on the inside to make this smaller door work within its opening. That's how you can save $400 is by using a more common sized door for your opening. We're taking the brick molding off because we are keeping our existing stuff there. We don't wanna to have to repaint the outside of the house and taking off all of that caulking and trim. So we'll just knock the, these, this trim off, maybe save it for another project. Okay, and then we can just 
grab our door. We're going to have to bring it inside the house first. And we're going to dry fit this first just to make sure that we'll be able to fit it in the way that we want to. Looks like I've got some drywall holding me up on the inside, sticking down, so I'll have to cut that out. So I've got a little bit of drywall hanging down below my framing here. I'm gonna pull this back out. Just see if I could get just a tiny bit of movement in that header. I also want to get this, this foam board out of here too. But sometimes with rough in framing, you get a little bit of movement by just pounding up on it. See, I just moved up an eighth of an inch there. So I'm gonna just use a block just pound on this header. So you kind of have to gauge things. If, if, if it seems to be getting tighter as you go in, it's probably too tight and you have to do a little bit more adjustment. So we'll, we'll adjust this header again. So sometimes things you have to go out of, the, out of the box of what you would think you would have to do to get some things to fit. So I really only need about an eighth of an inch. For whatever reason, this, this GM is a little bit taller than what the existing one was. So I'm just gonna use a planer and plane down my top edge of this just run a couple passes with my planer and then that should give me the thickness. Now, if this was a jam side, I'd probably be reluctant to do that because the jam is really what's uh, anchoring the door system to everything. The header is not so much a really significant part. It's not really doing anything structurally, it's not holding the door together. It's basically just holding weather stripping to seal the door. So I feel pretty comfortable reducing the size of the top on the sides. You wanna be uh, a little bit careful because that is the structural integrity of the door. So this side light has a little bit of further extension on this additional trim piece. So we're just gonna use our oscillating tool. Okay, so we got it dry fitted. We're gonna take this back up because there's one more important step before you actually install this jam. We'll get into that next. So that's why it's always important to dry fit this before you go putting silicone on this sill. Again, the, the biggest area where you're going to end up with water damage is at the sill level, especially if water is hitting this stoop and coming in. So we want to put a really generous bead of silicone. This is actually made by DAP. It's advanced siliconized sealant. So as long as you have basically 100% waterproof sealant on here, you can feel comfortable when you put in your sill. So I'm going to put like basically two large continuous beads on my protector wrap here. I'll just put one back here. All right, so then this will make sure that my threshold is sealed down there. So if any water comes in, it's not, you know, it'll be able to be avoided out. And actually, even after I install my jam, it might not be a bad idea to put some clear silicone against the, the actual threshold to the concrete. It's always a good idea to just double check your plumb this on here, but it's always a good idea to just double check that and screw that in. So we'll end up boring some holes here to put screws to anchor this. And then really the only option we have is on the, on the outside frame here to adhere here because we basically just have the edge of your, your side light right up against here. So we'll pilot drill some holes here. So we're gonna pre-drill some holes here to anchor this into our existing jam. Do about three screws going all the way down. Now I recommend using like a three inch deck screw. I personally like the deck screws. They're already coated, you know, they're not gonna rust, but at the very minimum use a, some kind of a galvanized screw or galvanized nail for that matter. So I, I personally like these, these screws that have these little additional threads at the end and this keeps it, prevents it from basically splitting the wood and it also makes a nice flush surface to your wood. 
So when you sink it down in, it just makes a nice, perfect little recess on it. And I could just fill that in with some putty. We put our door back on and we have a little bit of an issue. This is always kind of typical when you're installing a door. You know, you always have to shim or, or make things move to adjust the door. But right now we can't even close the door and it looks like we have to shim things this way in order for this, the door to, to kind of move up slightly. So we're gonna unscrew our, our screws here on the outside. So I thought it was gonna be easy, but apparently it looks like since my sill is so on level here, it's causing problems for my door to close. And I could tell right now that my sill here is sitting way up on top of this stoop and it's sinking down over here. So what I really need to do is to get this to move back further so that this can set down a little bit farther down. So I'm gonna have to pull the door out. We'll have to re-silicone and make sure that everything's good there. And then basically try to get this back further. So I'm gonna unscrew the door. <laughs> Determine the problem of getting this to sit in here nicely. It's basically my tile work is a little bit further extending in. So I don't know what happened or why this tile was a little bit further out, but it's, it's preventing me from sliding that door back. So I'm just gonna slightly cut off some of this tile so that I can slide my, my door back further. The issue that we, we have here is not only that the, the sill's a little uneven, is that our jam is a little, our existing jam is also on level as well. So we actually need to kind of skew this over a quarter inch against here. So what I'm gonna do is continue to take off the rest of what this jam is here, because it's not gonna matter because we're gonna actually be putting a little piece of trim on the outside. But what I need to do is to, to take this down so that I have a little bit of wiggle room to shim this and make it straight for the door to close properly. Okay, so I'm gonna make this jam, the top as tight to my jam as possible. And since I'm uneven like that, I'm gonna just move this tight to that corner. We'll use our level, make sure things are level. Fasten that tight to that wall and then use shims. Make sure our door closes. Okay, then before shimming things, you just wanna basically make sure that you try to keep the same reveal around all edges of the door. Obviously making sure that the door closes. Looking at this seam going down here, make sure that this looks equal. I already have this tight against this jam and almost, I can almost get a little bit more, but what I'll end up doing is just getting a, a, a screw into the hinge that a little bit tighter so that I can get my reveal. There's ways to adjust this without having to adjust the frame anymore. What, what my situation here was is that my existing frame was pretty unlevel. Door jams are pretty unlevel to begin with. So we just need to manipulate this to make sure that the door seals tightly. The most important thing is sealing tightly towards your weather stripping. Looking at these reveals, making sure they're even all the way around is gonna be key to making sure that everything seals properly against the weather seal. Okay, we'll get a, some shims on that corner here and also at the bottom. And I typically like to put my hinge, my, my shims kind of where the hinge is at because that's where the door is actually supported on hanging. So to get a little slight adjustment out of there, most doors will come with some longer screws for the hinges. So that'll help tighten and move this over a little bit more on the door side to make sure that it closes. So now we'll just put basically a uh, door stop transition over here, but I wanna try to somewhat keep the reveal the same all the way along, probably just split the difference. Okay, so we'll caulk this trim in place before we start using some expanding foam on the inside. You just wanna make sure that expanding foam isn't coming outside of this. I'm using a quick dry siliconized latex so I can paint this surface in the same day.
So on these bigger holes that you put these screws in, you don't want to just use regular caulking to fill that in. It'll shrink and it'll end up looking pretty terrible. You'll be able to see exactly where you put that screw hole. What I like to use is this plastic wood made by DAP. It's an excellent product and it doesn't shrink and it's paintable. Basically it goes on pink and it'll turn to like a natural wood color when it's dry. So you'll know when you can paint it. But definitely use this with a putty knife. This will make it look a lot and lot nicer and you only really have to go over this one time and then you'll be able to paint it. Otherwise you're, you're gonna see those nail holes and it'll look it'll look pretty terrible in my opinion on something this big if you put a little bit too much on there you can always just sand this down before painting now we have the trim on the outside now we can go ahead and foam this it's really important that you buy foam insulation that's made for windows and doors the reason this is important is because if you use a general foam it can actually end up expanding to the point where it ends up bowing in the jams So now we're gonna finish the trim on the inside. And the way we're gonna remedy this situation since we kept this, we have a smaller door and we kept those jams, is we're actually just gonna use a wider trim that kind of matches this existing colonial style trim. It's a three and a half inch wide trim. So it'll, it'll match fairly well with what the rest of the house has. To determine my reveal, I always put my trim on the hinge side first, just basically pressing it right up against those hinges and then just marking my reveal. And then this is basically the reveal that I wanna continue all the way around the door. Because otherwise, if you try to start here, you might end up having to notch around this if you're too tight. But typically it's about 3 eighths of an inch. Basically half of, of your jam is what you usually leave for a, a reveal. Let's just mark our reveal. So we've got 81 and 9 16 For some of the areas that we're going to patch to conquer, we're going to use a Sika Pro Select Concrete Fix. Basically just filling these areas. This is pretty important. If water came down here, it can go straight into the house essentially. So we're just going to use this to basically fill in this gap. Then another important thing I think is, is a good idea is just to use some clear 100% silicone and just go along the edge of the front of the stoop. Main reason is, is if, if water hits this, you don't want that the water coming back into the house. And then I, I'm not gonna finger this because I don't wanna get more of it coming on to, out onto the concrete. So just trying to keep a continuous nice speed against that concrete which should seal it. Then your packet will come with these little extra little weather strippings. And a lot of times you want to put these at the bottom corner and the top corner of your door after you paint it. I can actually see a little bit light, a little bit of light right at that corner. So it's got a little sticky back on it. Pull that off and put these up at these corners. So wow, uh, first impressions are everything. Putting in a new door really gives a great feel walking into your house. I hope these tips helped you out and I hope I saved you a little bit of money. That's even better. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. It'll help out other people to find it and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.